proudly brought to you by National Mini Storage. It's New Zealand's favourite and most extreme fishing show, Screaming Reels. I've got him, I've got him, I've got him. Woo -hoo -hoo. A bit of weight on him, mate. He's a bit of weight on him. Oh, yeah! Lee Hart and Jason Hoyt are two of New Zealand's most experienced and extreme fishermen. Together with their charter skipper Lance and his boat, the Manta Ray, they are heading to one of Lee's secret locations to target the big kingies. G'day, I'm with my old mate Jace. Welcome to Screaming Reels, New Zealand's premier high octane action packed fishing show. I tell you, if there's fish to be caught, Lee Hart, you've got New Zealand's premier fishermen on the game for you. We're heading out to the deep water looking for the big fish today. That's right, we'll be giving you tips and much more action. And today we're heading out to an old favourite spot of mine, Andy's Hole, to get those big kingies. And if you can't catch a fish at Andy's Hole, you can't catch them anywhere. I tell you what, because we're going for the kingies, we'll be going for the live baits, Lee Hart, your kahawais, your pipers. Uh, your pilchies to snare those big fish in the deep water, mate. That's right, Jace. We've got a gaff, we've got a net. Two things you're going to need in Andy's hole. Let's go get those big kingies. Let's do the business, mate. Lee and Jace are off to get the big kingies. Bites here. Mm, nice. Come on! Then drama. Check it. Get Lee's reel starts get screaming. Jace! It's all go on the manta ray. Now Don't Lee and Jace around. must work as a team to reel in what could be a big dinghy. Get, get, get the. Where is it? Get the harness. Got cover there? Oh, geez, I'm up. You right? just a, it's just a, just a seabird. Ah, uh, bugger. Bastards out here. Bloody birds. Ah, oh, that's a bastard. Bad enough when a fish takes your bait, let alone a duck-looking thing. It's not an ideal start, but Lee knows that there are plenty more fish where that bird came from, and he's eager to talk to Lance about Andy's hole. Yeah, well, here we are, Lance, mate, I tell you. Out of Andy's hole, a bit of a secret spot that uh, we go to. We don't like to take a lot of people here, but a bit quiet today, don't it? Yeah, a little bit quiet. Yeah. yeah. God, we go back a long way, mate, don't we? We do, mate. Oh, I remember that time. A couple of stripies. Have you uh, a couple, couple, couple of stripies wandering around the island over there? Saw them, saw them jumping out. Keen, frisky as fish. The stripies, yeah, jumping out over there by the island, about 100 metres offshore. We'll, we'll come back for those later. Yeah, we'll go We'll go for the kingies here and uh, maybe get out to those stripies later on. Got a plan, mate. That's a plan. Yeah. Um, when you go fishing, you got to have a plan. You don't want to just be keep moving the boat around willy-nilly. You need to have a bit of patience. you got to have a plan and execute that plan. So today we're getting our live bait. Uh, and then we're going to go for the for the big kingies. And uh, when you've got experience like we have combined, probably over 150 years worth of experience combined here, uh, you'll come over something. The boys fish the waters in and around Andy's hole for hours without too much luck. This is not an ideal start for the TV series. No, no bites. It's unusual. Um, you know, you come to Andy's hole here, we, we always come away with something, you know, even puffer fish, you know, but a bit quiet today. But that's fishing. Uh, you get used to that, uh, especially when you do a fishing show, you kind of get used to, you know, just having a hat with a, or a T-shirt with a logo on it. It doesn't make a fishing show, you know what I mean? Uh, you got to catch fish, and, and uh, there's more to it than that. So uh, we'll give it a bit longer here, and then maybe head on to um, Nicky's Shaft, maybe. Yeah, Nicky's Shaft, I think so. Um, I, we could go Rangi Toto. We could um, do a bit of long lining off there. It looks pretty calm by the island there, so I think it could be some pretty good hot action yeah. there. Worst comes to worst, we could just um, saddle back past um, Aaron's ring. Yeah. In these particular conditions, the boys have plenty of top locations to choose from, but they opt for a little known spot called Nicky's Shaft. And it will be here that they will use their combined fishing knowledge. 
You know, I've been uh, fishing for quite a number of years now, but I've also, you know, fished with Lee a lot over that time, and he he really knows his stuff. You know, he's um, he's fished most of the major oceans in the world. He's got world records for uh, game fish. And as he said earlier, you know, it's not about having the fancy hats and the t-shirts and all that sort of carry on. It's it's trying to think like a fish, you know. And he's great at understanding everything that's going on under the surface. You know, definitely. Definitely one of the most onto it fishermen I've ever worked with, to be fair. Yeah, and what I probably like most about fishing on boats like the manta ray, I mean, they've got great features, but probably none better than this, this ranch slider. Look at that, it gently slides back and forth. So you don't want a door that flaps this way or that way, not in these conditions when it can get swelly, but a uh, ranch slider, you see, back and forth, you don't have that, that flappiness going on there. And great indoor-outdoor flow, of course. Indoor, outdoor, which is great for fishing. So whenever I go out on a boat, I pretty much say, has it got a ranch slider? They say, yes, I'll book it. Good? Good, mate. Lance has been asked to move the boat yet again, as it doesn't quite feel right at Nicky's shaft. They are moving to a secret deep water location called Aaron's Ring. When you're fishing like we do with a partner, you really got to know them inside out. Um, it's life or death out there sometimes. Whether you catch that fish or not, it's often to do with how you work together with, with a partner. Uh, but Jason's great like that. You know, he instinctively knows what I'm going to do and, and vice versa. Um, they don't call him Jason Softbait Hoyt for nothing. You know, he really knows his stuff, his tackles. Actually, they used to call him Jason Hard Tackle Hoyt for a while there, but that was when he was doing his more adult movie stuff. Um, sort of that's a few years ago now. But out here on the water, he's second to none. With the tide turning, it's time to get those reels screaming. Yeah, you see. Hey, you, getting, you got a bit of a, a bit of a nest, have you? Yeah, a bit of a nest going on there, mate. Oh, it's not as big as that nest you had back in bloody '98. Remember that nah, one? Ah, that was a disaster. It took me bloody eight hours to get it out. Remember? While Jace deals with that bird's nest, it's time for a screaming reels top tip. Safety's a big part of it, you know. Just because you can see the city doesn't mean the city can see you. That's an old saying we always use um, when we're out fishing. And um, same with the distress calls, SOS. What I like to do, I always like to send out a mayday before I even leave the jetty. Uh, and then you come out here, if nothing goes wrong, you can always cancel it later on. Mm. That's a good, safe way of doing it, covering your ass, so to speak. Uh, sunscreen, of course, is important. It gets hot out here. Sure does. And uh, you'll notice I'm wearing shorts. That's fine. But I've got a liner in them, a fine liner. Uh, reason for that, I was out with Jace a few years back. You'll notice he's wearing trackies now. He had a pair of rugby shorts, um, no liner in there. I did a long line cast, and uh, it's kind of hooked. Hooked his scrotum or hooked his testicle um, with the hook there, just off wearing a toto, I think. And no, 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 it was hen and chickens, I think. I'm pretty sure it was rangitoto. Mm, no, I'm pretty sure it was a hen and chickens. I think when you've got a four-inch hook in your chest, it doesn't matter really where it happened, does it? No, not really. Coming up, more Screaming Reels action. Uh, she's pretty choppy up there today, not really getting much action at all, which is... As, uh, as we said earlier, pretty unusual for Andy's hole. So um, we may look to uh, maybe move on a couple of nautical miles. Uh, I saw a couple of stripies out, out by the island uh, earlier on and um, might be worth having a bit of a troll around there. Yeah, we'll come back for them. I wouldn't mind going for a bit of Gurnard later. Yeah. Um, probably use your Benito bait. Use Benito's, eh, in the Gurnard, you reckon? Yeah. Benito, yeah. You on, are you? Yeah, I think so, mate. You got the harness there? Yawn. But yeah, then drama. Don't let this one go, buddy. No, it's all good, buddy. I've got him. Jace is on, and it could be big. There's a bit of weight on her, mate. She's a bit of weight on her. Yeah, I'm on, mate. So if anyone get, get, the, uh, get the gaff for me. A couple of weeks back, the gaff? Yeah, get, get, that, get the gaff. That'll be great. Are you sure? Yeah. I'll tell you, a couple of weeks back, Jace had a, uh, a gurnet on there, all the way up. What do you reckon? Eight pounder? Yeah, eight pounds. Snap eight right off there. Don't yeah. miss this one. You jigging? You jigging? I tell you what, she's got some kick in her. She's got a bit of fight in her, that's for sure. I'm thinking a gurney, maybe. There we go! Ah, oh. ah, oh, bugger it. I think I might have a bit too much weight on there, mate. Good thing I didn't get the harness. Um, all oh, right. that's a bugger. I was sure there was on there. We might spin the boat round, I think. Um, Lance, could mate, we go starboard, mate? Maybe we should just spin the boat round, eh? Yeah. Might well, it'd be help. easy to just stand over there, wouldn't it? You'd have to spin the boat. Oh, around. yeah, well, don't worry about it, Lance. I'll, I'll just, just, just stand over, over there, mate. I'll, I'll... 
So far, it has not been Jason Lee's day, but luckily, they have their experience to fall back on. What you find here, the topography underneath here, is quite unique to New Zealand. You've got these channels, and what we're doing, um, we're baiting, we're chumping, um, burling in the channels, and we're setting a trap, basically. So it's patience. We'll try that side of the boat. Lee carefully prepares the burly bomb and sets it at the correct depth. What's that? Is that the burly? Is that it? Yeah. That's not our burly, is it? I'm not sure if it was tied on, to be honest. It seems Lee may have failed to tie the top of the burly cage, and the burly bomb has floated out to sea. It's not ideal. Well, that's not ideal. That's our burly drifting way back there now. Um, the main thing is keeping those seabirds distracted back there so we can get on with our fishing. So it's all part of the plan. Watching a uh, old movie the other day, Jay's actually. Oh yeah, you like your old movies, yeah, don't you? Yeah, you know. Well, the Graduate. Remember the Graduate, Dustin Hoffman. Oh right, yeah, great movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So remember he's there and is, he gets seduced by his, his mum's best friend. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Sort of begs the question, you know, you know, if you, say your mum's best friend, right? Right. Yeah. You know, just say, you know, that whole scenario, and she sort of you, you took her home one night, and she. She hit on you, you know. Mum, my mum wasn't home. She or my yeah, mum was coming yeah, home. Yeah, and she, totally. yeah, yeah. You reckon you'd go there? You reckon you'd make love to her? I think I would, mate. Yeah, you know. So what's your mum now? What about seventy nine or? She is seventy nine. Yeah. So what? So you'd make love to a 79, 80 year old woman? What do you mean? Well, you just said you'd like to make love to one of your your, your mum's best friends. And I'm guessing she's about the same age as her. She'll be like 79, 80. Well, I, I thought you were meaning in terms of like the Dustin Hoffman scenario and the graduate. She's sort of, sort of mid 40s. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm that, young 20s. No, it's not a time machine. You just can't go back there and just change the situations. I just said, would you? Well, you brought the graduate up and said if you're in the graduate scenario with you know I'll be a young buck, she'd be mid 40s. Yeah, but you're not Dustin Hoffman either. I'm just saying, you, you, the scenario is that one of your mum's best friends hits on you. Yes. As in the, the Dustin Hoffman scenario, would you, would you go there and you said you would? Well, I didn't know that you meant specifically now. Well, you can't go back in time. I mean, if you go back to that age bracket, you're, you're over 40 now, you'd be older than the woman that's trying to seduce you. Well, I mean, if you were meaning it now, of course I wouldn't make love to my mum's best friend. I mean, she's in the 80s, she's in a bloody wheelchair, for God's sake. I don't think it matters if she's in a wheelchair, and a lot of people make love to people in wheelchairs, James. Well, I'm not, saying that it, I'm not saying that it's because she's in a wheelchair that I wouldn't have Many sex people with in wheelchairs. I know this, but, and I'm not saying that, I'm just saying. Obviously, I wouldn't make love to an 80-year-old 80, 80 woman. It's a bit quiet here, isn't it? Yeah, I think we'll take her around. Take her around the bay, I think. Lance. Jason Lee relocate yet again in search of the big kingies and some screaming reels action. You're nesting. Yeah, I've got a bit of a nest here. It happens um, sometimes when you're going for the big kingies, but you're going to have to pull in what I've got left there with the hand line, but as I say, sort of experience on the skiff with the hand line. Yeah, there you go. There, well, there you, go. you go. There, see, look at that. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, okay. definitely a few bites there. Yeah, definitely, mate. Point out that, I reckon that would be, look at the bite mark on that. That'll be a good uh, three footer. I think so, mate. Yeah. We'll take that back ashore and get, it analyzed. get the guy from DSIR to look at the bite mark and see what we're dealing with. I reckon it's a big kingy. Yeah, big kingy. Groper? Maybe even different, a striper. Different shape for a groper. Isn't even it? a even a poker. Maybe a groper, but I don't. I've never seen a groper make that that shape before. Well, I, I have. That's maybe what caused your nest when the kingy struck. Yeah, that's a kingy. Look at that. Things are looking up with that big kingy strike, so they fish this location a little longer. Yes, it's good to be out in the water. Sure is, mate. Beautiful. Oh, I used to come out here with the old great uncle. Old salted nuts, McPherson. First yeah. guy that got me into fishing, really, eh? Pretty much had salt water in his veins, that guy, I tell you. Didn't he literally have salt in his veins? Yeah, he did, literally. Mm. That's what killed him in the end. Sort of hardening of the arteries. Kind of yeah, a weird yeah. blood condition. So now a very high salt content. But, um... Uh, he's one of those guys, you know, you knew the old... the old uh, Morty ways, you know? Of fishing and navigating. He used to get on the front of the, the bow of the boat. You know, especially at night. And uh, you don't really have the stars if it's cloudy. And just, just dangling his testicles over the bow there. Get those subtle wind shifts. 
and he could pick them up just with those little fine hairs of his testicles. You can tell which way the, the you know, subtle wind shifts, even tide shifts. Oh. But uh, a bit of a skill, really. It is, it is. Came a copper one night, of course, though. He just coming into the harbour there at night. Um, I think he had a stag do on board or something, and uh, he was out of the bow doing the navigation like that. Mm. No lights on in the harbour. It was a power cut. Mm. Came straight in, and it crushed him on the, on the jetty. But, crushed his um, testicles? They replaced them, of course. Put some ball bearings in there. Could mold iron nuts then. You could always hear him coming. He was like one of those, like those Newton balls, you know, oh, like, right, the, the like clack, in an office. The clack. You could yeah, hear him nice. clacking coming down the street. Oh, here he comes. Oh, ball bearing nuts. Hell of a fisherman. Uh, Any luck? Nah. Nah, quiet, mate. Ah, oh, well, move on, eh? Hey, coming up, we're going to be cooking up something like Kaimawana on the barbecue. Welcome back to Screaming Reels. It's a pity we had to go that ad break because during that ad break we had a huge striped marlin breaching over here and had her on there, but it's gone now, but there you go. It was a great run too, wasn't it? It's very unusual to see a striped marlin so close to the shore, actually, but uh, geez, I thought you had him there, mate. It's always one that gets away, you know, when it comes to fishing. It's not the one you get, it's the one you don't get. It's what we keep telling ourselves when you're out on the water, you know, as I say, you can't say we're not a sustainable fishing show. Lee Hart and Jason Hoyt are two of New Zealand's most experienced and extreme fishermen. Today, they are on the Hauraki Gulf targeting the big kingies. You had a couple of weeks back, you got a couple of cooties out here? Yes, no, more, more your pookies. Barracudis? Yeah, your barracudis. Um, no barracudis? No, no barracudis. Yeah, your barramundis? Yeah, your barramundis. Okay. Yeah. Just with a soft bait. Soft baits? Soft bait, uh, a lot of weight on your line, you know, you just run it with the tide. What are you running with? Squid? Squid, yeah. Well, that's kind of hard bait though, isn't it? Well, it can be. Well, if it's frozen, it is. Well, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. How about barramundis? No, nah, I don't get them around here. Stripies? Oh, some stripies. Striped barracudis? Particularly in the uh, the current next to Rangitoto, they, yeah. they like to get into that current there, but... Uh, Your deep water puffers? Oh yeah, definitely deep water puffers. Once you get one of those, you see, they'll come by hunting packs. They'll, they'll come in there and they'll swarm you. Certainly you don't want to get caught up in that frenzy. Well, that's when you need your long line, really, isn't it? Yeah. You know, off the skiff. I caught a couple of big kingfishers as well, over there, in that similar kind of conditions. Kingfishers? Yeah. What, the birds? What? The birds. What do you mean? Kingfishers are birds, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that's what I, well, I got. I got some kingies, so, you know, you the fish, and then um, and some snapper, and also for bonus a couple of kingfishers. They an ocean bird, aren't they? Yeah. I thought they were only rivers. No, no, they, they, well, it depends on the estuary where you are. They can come out. So what? You caught a couple of kingfisher birds and some kingies. Yeah. No, well, I certainly were surprised at the way in when I brought those in, but um, no one else had any. Put it that way. You mount them. Kingfishers? Mm. Yeah. And they might get to mount another one as Lee is onto a big kingy. She's a fighter, she's a fighter, she's a big fish, but your fingers about these ones. They fight. Ah, the kingy is putting up a fight, so Lee must use all his experience to outthink the fish. If you want for the fishing club, this one. How's it going? You didn't get that, did you? With the bait still intact, Lee is able to recast. Time is money when you're going for the big kingies. Well, here at Aaron's Hole, I tell you what, we've got it all going on. We've got the kingies down there. They're striking, but we've been unlucky. Um, even the kawai as well. You had a couple of snapper earlier, I yeah, think, a couple, couple of bites. Of, a couple of 20 pounders that got off the line, unfortunately. Yeah, but that, was, that, was, that was full on, that, eh? Yeah, very full on. Very full on. Got a highlight of that? I think we might have. Uh, yeah, I think, you, I think we got that. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Ah, oh, bugger it. Anyway, what we do know down here, though, we've got your craze down here. Also your power, a lot of the other sort of seashell stuff that we get around this area. Your tua tuas, your scallops. Yeah, so what we might do is get the dive gear on, head down, have a dive, see what we can't get. Did you bring your dive gear? No. You? <sighs> got the dive gear, Lance? No, mate. Got to have dive gear to dive, Lance. Can't dive without dive gear. 
With no dive gear to speak of, the boys do some fast-paced trawling, and it's not long before they've got some more screaming reels action. Trawling at 35 knots is fast by usual standards, but Lee knows he has a big kingy on the line and doesn't want to risk slowing down and giving the monster fish a chance to break free. Instead, he tells Lance to speed up. But then drama. The fishing reel is ripped from the rod. Lance has never seen a situation like this, and Jason and Lee reflect on what they could have done differently. They came close to pulling in the elusive kingy. But a good fisherman knows when to call it a day. There's always another big one out there you never got, no matter how many you catch. And uh, I know that big kingy that you had on, she'll be out there now, growing bigger. Exactly, you know, for next mate. time, someone else to catch maybe, or maybe us when we head back out there. And we'll be targeting that one for sure, mate. An average day on the water is still uh, a hell of a lot better than a shit day on land, I can tell you that much. How do you mean? Well, you know, an average day on the water is still better than most of the time that you're going to, you know, be on land. Oh, yeah, that's how you get out of the water. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. better than being, oh, then you get a shit day out there, though, it can be horrible. It hasn't been the perfect day out on the water, but Jace and Lee are not about to blame their equipment. You know, you know I probably wouldn't say it to his face, but Lance, probably a little bit of an experience of what we were trying to do out there. Um, we had a simple plan and it really needs to be executed well, and the way he was moving that boat around there um, really made it pretty hard for us to strike those big kickers, even the snappers. Yeah. But anyway, you know, he'll learn. As you know, the main part of any fishing show, Lance, is the, the end when you get to cook up some of your kaimawana. And uh, I think, Jace, you've got an excellent uh, recipe for uh, kingfish sauce, maybe yeah, the snapper? I, I do, mate. Uh, it's an emulsion with uh, soy sauce, ginger, wasabi, and a little bit of garlic, and you just marinate just those. Whisk it there. You whisk it all together like a dressing, and you marinate that, and a little bit of lime juice too. Perfect with your kingfish or your snapper. Yes, unfortunately for us, we haven't got either, but we won't be going hungry. We've got some sausages here. Uh, New Yorker pork is, in fact. Well, they look good, mate. They you look want bloody sauce, good. sauce on that, mate? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Screaming Sorry. Reels would like to thank the support of Waka Changi, New Zealand's oldest and most trusted beer since 1648. Our friends at Hellas, New Zealand's butcher. Have you tried the New Yorker porkers yet? The all new Rexton from Sanyong. And of course, National Mini Storage, creating space. <laughs>